talking about things in the atmosphere. Um, UFOs. Let's talk about UFOs, fly, uh, unidentified flying objects. Is this an unidentified flying object? No, this is a stealth fighter. The stealth fighters, they're nice and thin to try to make as small a, foot, a radar footprint so they can escape detection. Therefore, the stealth. But it's a completely radically different aerodynamic shape, something you might think would come from Martians. And when you see fighter jets following it, that means that uh, they're trying to escort it out of our atmosphere back to their star system so they don't do any damage. But before they announce the stealth fighter, what do people thought? UFOs, no doubt. So it's possible that some of the UFOs are just experimental aircraft that they're flying, they're testing, and people are seeing it, and the, the Air Force is denying it. But I guarantee you, they test flew the, the, the stealth bombers and stealth fighters. They, they, they flew them, and people saw them. And that's probably several uh, UFO incidences were just this. There's one over the stadium. Look, it's a UFO, flying saucer. Probably not. Not all UFOs are that, of course, but some of them. We're talking about what it could be. It could be experimental aircraft, because that doesn't look like a that doesn't look like a jet. It looks like something from another star system. See, stealth bomber. That could be the wing lights on a stealth bomber, couldn't it? And this was done before they announced the stealth bomber. It was actually a program on some some cable station about UFOs, and it has the, the wing lights like a stealth bomber. What's that? What about the one reported in history? Yeah, I'm not, saying, I'm not saying all UFOs are experimental aircraft. I'm just saying we're going through the possibilities. Some of it could be garbage can lids someone threw over the street. <laughs> or it could be uh, hubcaps. Hubcaps. There were a lot of these UFO pictures in the 1950s. So many that they actually opened up a congressional investigation, right, Operation Blue Book, to try to see if we really have been invaded by UFOs. And they compiled all these images. And they're coming from the late 50s and 60s. Well, you know what's happening culturally in the late 50s and 60s, right? Yeah, I mean, there, there was that, but in terms of space, think about movies in the 50s and 60s. Yeah, there were all kinds of movies about aliens invading the Earth. The, yeah, one of the one of the first stories was a, a book called War of the Worlds by uh, H.G. Wells, War of the Worlds, and they made it into a broadcast. They took the book and compressed it into a broadcast, which caused all kinds of problems because at the beginning of the broadcast, they told everybody it's just a dramatization, and at the end of the broadcast, they told them that, right? But what about the people that tuned in? They tuned in the broadcast halfway through, and then they already got their shotgun and went out on the back porch <laughs> because they're going to defend their house from the UFOs. And that happened. It's called the panic broadcast, and it caused panic across the U.S. because there was a large number of people who tuned in and thought that this was actually happening. And uh, craziness. This one guy um, shot his water tower, <laughs> destroyed it, it show, that's another possibility for UFOs. Whenever you create a strong suggestion, people will see things in a certain way just because you've su suggested it. I know that sounds crazy, but there was a guy who went out with a shotgun. He, he listened to the radio, and the radio was saying they have this big bulbous head and these long legs, and they walk into the cities. And he went out on the back porch. He sees this big bulbous thing with long legs, and he shoots it. It's the water tower he's seen every day of his life for the last 20 years. He built the water tower, and he's shooting it. Because in his mind, it became one of those creatures, simply because of the power of the suggestion. And so it's quite possible when you create that kind of hysteria, people are going to begin seeing things and taking pictures of things and maybe even falsifying some things. I mean, that looks like a garbage can lid or something. Another possibility for UFOs or models that have been made, electronic models that fly, and they do it, especially at night, because at night it's very difficult to get an idea of scale. So you have a small model, and it can look very large. There's even a guy who, who prided himself on doing that. 
and he would kept a scrapbook collection of all the news reports on his UFO that he had made. There's one story where he was flying it over a concert. It was a Weird Al Yankovic concert. <laughs> and he was flying the, and it made, made sense because Weird Al Yankovic, that's when he's doing all his Star Wars parodies. And so he's flying it over the, the stadium there and the people are freaking out because there's a UFO and, and they, they, uh, the security guards caught him. He said he thought it was really strange because they had like full body armor and so why are the security guards wearing full body armor like SWAT team guys? And when he got on stage and there was enough light, he saw that they were stormtroopers. Because <laughs> it's Weird Al Yankovic, he's doing Star Wars. And so they had, they had caught him and brought him on stage, but evidently he had built models and that was his thing, was to fly things over large groups of people at night and try to get his name in the papers. Is this proof? that these beings and their ships exist? Or is it just a sophisticated hoax? It's not even very sophisticated. That's not very convincing. It's a UFO on a string. <laughs> these pictures have been analyzed by experts. They have been unable to prove any fraud. If my They're real pictures. What he claims, it's a revelation. And if he has not, then this case serves I'm glad they blew it up, because that's a lot clearer. This one has lights. Those lights in the sky. If you look really carefully at this, this uh, object, you'll see it doing just wobbling, just a little bit, which would suggest that these are on a string, or it's some kind of uh, model that's this flying. Proof that these see how it's kind of wobbling? Is this proof that these beings? Is this proof that these beings and their ships exist? Mm -hmm. So that would suggest we're looking at some object up close. It's maybe has lights on it, um, but you look for for telltale signs. They are widespread, and they have stayed on the front pages for decades. No one. Notice where the video stops. It's about to cross in front of this mountain, right? Right. <laughs> when you're examining video, cross-cutting relationships are very important. If it goes behind the mountain, that means it's something very large at a distance, like a spaceship. If it goes in front of the mountain, it could be like a balloon or something, or a kite. You know? And so that's important. So whenever you see videotape and they're getting to something that's going to cross and they stop it right before it gets there, then that's a sign that it's probably something small in the foreground. Not really worth uh, taking seriously.